News TV Puerto Rico. Estoy en Fine Wine Imports, aquí en Cataño, en su warehouse. Estoy con el señor Scott Flurry de Thomas Rivers Brown Wines. Tenemos un programazo, tenemos un vino blanco y tres tintos. Un blend, ya no los va a contar él, un Pinot Noir y dos Cabernet. How are you, man? I'm well, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So, um, you know, first question out of the gate, Thomas Rivers Brown. Yes. He is, you know, like the... I don't know, the uh, Chicago Bulls back in the 90s, or yeah, the Lakers, he's, he's, he's or Jordan, yeah, exactly. Jordan yeah. or Messi, for those who <laughs> love soccer. Exactly. Tell, tell me about, uh, tell us and tell our viewers about him for those who may, may have not heard his name before. Yeah, so Thomas was born in South Carolina. He went to the University of Virginia. A uh, pretty roundabout way to be in California making mm -hmm. some of the most world-class wines that mm -hmm. Napa has to offer. Go ahead, go ahead. But along with that, um, mm -hmm. there's no formal training, which really gave him kind of an, an edge, if you will, would be his yeah. sort of um, getting to learn through mistakes and through uh, through successes as well. So he moved out to California, met a guy named Aaron Jordan, who makes the Vela wines, yeah. at the time was making Turley. Um, he saw this, Thomas had a great aptitude for making wines. So he brought him on to Turley and Thomas just excelled and grew up the ranks. Uh, through that, he's been the cover of Wine Spectator two yeah. times now. Yeah. Uh, he's in the last two, um, the last two uh, uh, magazines that came out, the last yeah. two uh, editions of Wine Spectator as well, yeah. with the two of the top scoring wines also. Yeah. He's making wine for about 47 different wineries now. He has close to 50 100-point scores, yeah. which is pretty incredible. Wow. A lot of people wow. go their entire lives without, without wine. Without 100 score and he's points. Almost 50 yeah. I mean, he, he is magnificent. I've had some of his wines. And... Um, let me ask you about uh, his, his, if you know the, the answer to this, but growing up, did his parents drink wine? Was he exposed to wine at home or he S fell in love later on? Yeah, okay. South Carolina is not known for, uh, especially Sumter is not known for yeah. a lot of wine consumption, especially high-end wine, not to malign South Carolina. I'm yeah. from there as okay, well, okay. so I can, I can say that. Yeah. Uh, but no, not really. I mean, he, his, he was dating a girl in college at UVA, and her father was really big into wines, and through that, he introduced Thomas to wines. And a big deal for us as well is price points. Um, Thomas makes some very expensive wines, uh, very sought after for that yeah, reason. It's supply and demand. Supply and demand. Yeah. But with that, um, a lot of the wines that he brings that we brought to Puerto Rico as well are very value driven. And that's something, uh, having the exposure, being able to taste the wines, because yeah. if you can't afford them, if you can't get to taste some of these amazing things and fall in love with the wine. So that's a great segue to get into the wine. So first we're doing a uh, white. Tell us about this one. And cheers. Welcome cheers. to Puerto Rico. Thank you for having me. Tell us about this one. So Mending Wall is, a, is a primarily a custom crush facility that's in St. Helena, um, almost to Calistoga on the Silverado Trail. And the identity behind these are really in the style of what Thomas likes to drink. And really, um, that's sort of the identity behind the brand Mending Wall itself. It's where he makes some of the, it's kind of like the Murderer's Row, some of those okay. most famous wineries are made there, primarily Cabernet. But the only white wine made at Mending Wall is Stone on Stone. So this is a Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon blend. In the white Bordeaux style. Exactly right. Yeah. So uh, with that, Thomas likes to have a little more structure, a little more character in the wine. Richness it, from the Semillon. Exactly. Yeah. So a little more palate, a little more weight to it as well. Uh, and it's a little bit more complex. Sauvignon Blanc can sometimes be one-dimensional, but this really boosts it. Like you nailed it. That's white Bordeaux. But in yeah. Napa Valley style. Beautiful. And I, I get what you're seeing because Sauvignon Blanc can be well, way too tropical. Lots of you know, one-dimensional characteristics. Here, the Semillon adds that mystery, right? The honeysuckle, the, when you have the matchstick characteristic exactly. as well, flinty, stony, it's gorgeous. Good it's texture too as well. Yeah. And it's very versatile as well. So it's not, Semillon Blanc can sort of be just that linear sort of flavor to sort it. Sort of like pool wine, beach wine. Here, this is high table. Like this is, this is something we do a lot of work with, um, with tasting menus. Yeah. Chefs have a lot of fun with this because it, it does stretch over so many different types of cuisine that you're able to pair with. I mean, it's it's a very versatile. Where style do you form. live? I live in Arizona. In Arizona. So, what do you if you having a bottle of this with your friends, family? Uh, what do you pair this with? Uh, this can pair with literally anything that we want to do. It has a nice, nice weight to it, so yeah. we can pair with the salmon. That it's not that really. It's not too acidic. It has a really nice character and structure behind the wine without being sort of. Um, it just checks a lot of boxes. Yeah. It can go here in Puerto Rico. We eat a lot of pork. Yes. And it could go with pork very well because it has beautiful acidity. Sometimes it's hard to achieve this lovely acidity with a wine that has weight or has luscious fruit. I'm thinking, you know, about other varietals and other winemakers. But here you have the acidity to cut through the fat, but also you have the substance. I mean, it's a, it's a meaty wine, but in a graceful way. 
It's it's love. It's a lovely wine. All right. Thank you for that. Let's go into Pleasure. Aston State. This is a Pinot Noir, a grape that for many is their go-to grape. Tell us about this one. Yeah, so Thomas is really known for Cabernet. I mean, it's what Napa Valley is most famous for. But there's a great region right next to us in the Sonoma County as well. Um, this estate is about as far northwest as you can get in the Sonoma County, in the Sonoma Valley, I should say. Um, this is in Annapolis, California, surrounded by redwoods. It's a gorgeous piece of land. Um, it's up by flowers and a few other wineries as well. This is 2019 Sonoma Coast. Aston was planted by Chuck Sweeney and Fred Schrader. Those names might ring yeah, a bell. Of course. Pretty famous guys in the valley. They found this piece of land. Fred had this amazing aptitude for finding these vineyard sites. Uh, they, they found this piece of land and ended up going up and planting it with Ulysses Valdez. So An another another huge name, name, yeah. Probably the name in Sonoma exactly. for farming. Um, and then they started making this, this wine um, several years ago. And it's been, it's been around for a while, but Thomas purchased this about a year ago. About a year and a half ago so tom's owns his vineyard out right now lovely aromatic nose and it reminds me of of christmas i mean the spice you have clove the cranberry and i would close to him as well the cranberry as well but there's this this er, like not herbal but but this fresh note of, of, of some kind of tea black tea green tea red tea and um just uh just a hint of, of some orange rind, like citrusy fruit. That's like a great bl call. Like blossom orange. Yeah, orange rind on this is a great call. Um, we've had some really great vintages in Sonoma uh, recently. 18s, 19s, 21s, 22s. 20 was challenging for several different reasons, uh, but 2019 is a fantastic vintage. So anything you're going to try from Sonoma from 19 should be exceptional. And same with 21s looking forward as well. The fruit is so vibrant, so energetic, crunchy. The acidity is lovely. Um, it's 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 definitely uh, a California wine, but you can see a little bit of that homage to red burgundy in a way, right? Uh, because I'm I'm also getting some some seed, some vision mustard seed. It's it's lovely. It's very complex. Uh, what's the alcohol level here? You you recall that? Fourteen five. Fourteen five. Yeah. It doesn't feel fourteen five at all. And I love the color. The color of this wine is just. Lovely. It's very romantic. Lovely wine. What do you pair this with back home? Again, very versatile. We do a lot with salmon on this one as well. Yeah. As you can tell, I mostly eat seafood. Yeah, yeah salmon. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, the pork don't tell, me, things, don't but... tell me with the four winds you did with salmon. <laughs> okay. Go on, go I on. I can pair with a few other things as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, stews, this, this is very bright. You can even do this with like with a sushi. I mean, it has enough weight yeah. to hold up to maybe like not a, not a ribeye perhaps, but if you were to pair this with steak, it would certainly work as well. Again, the versatility of these last two lines are very... I, I, like, if, if we go a little a little more casual, I'm thinking of pizza, pepperoni pizza. Absolutely. As a spiciness. And then it's hard sometimes to pair wines with things that have tomato sauce because of the acidity sure. of the tomato, right? But this wine, it's lovely. And, and it can, again, go with uh, something more casual, relaxed, and then with something more fancy at a you know, white cloth kind of linen uh, table. Beautiful, beautiful wine, Aston State. Um, all right, time for some uh, Cabernet. You ready? Yeah. You haven't had any of that. You want to have some? Cheers. <laughs> I notice you, uh, I talk a lot, and I try to uh, make this as fast as possible because people are interested at the end of the day in where do I buy the wines, what do they go with, and, you know, kind of the story behind the label, Absolutely. right? So let's get into Cabernet Sauvignon 2020. I have a friend who's a very well-known uh, reggaeton singer, who sent me a, a picture of this wine, and he told me, man, who brings this to Puerto Rico? I'm loving it. A kudos to Tito El Bambino, a dear friend who's also a wine lover, who loves this wine. Tell me about this one. And I've, I've never had this one before. <clears throat> so Cabernet Wall, the entire idea behind this is Thomas makes some of the most world-class Cabernets in Napa Valley. Uh, his business partner and best friend is a guy named Matt Harden, a uh, seventh-generation Napa farmer. Uh, his mom's maiden name is Rutherford. So it kind of brings back the history of Napa in yeah. a very concise way. These guys are really great at what they do. So Matt brings the farming aspect. Thomas makes the wines. So the entire idea was to make the best bottle of wine possible for around $50. Thomas is not really known for $50 Cabernets. This has been an incredible entrance into the market. We sell it out in a week every single year. We sell it's it the third week of July. It's gorgeous. It flies out the door. Puerto Rico gets one of the largest allocations That's every great. Year. That's great. Yeah. We, we drink a lot of wine. We, we drink a lot of everything down here. But this wine is unbelievable. It smells like a wine that costs twice or three times its price. I guess you're going for that. Uh, and you know, it's, it's Thomas' a way of, of producing high-end, high-quality wines. But 
you have this uh, intensity, aromatic intensity, and you have the, the cassis, the mint, you have all of that beautiful sort of plum, yep. so like red and, and black fruit as well. It's a hundred percent cap, right? Hundred percent cabernet. It's lovely. It's 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 a it's a lovely note. Let's see it in the, the palate. Oh my lord. We wanted to over deliver. That's wow. something that we absolutely nailed. We want to increase this. Um, that's the idea. I that won't name be. names. But there are wines out there that when I started doing wine uh, content, wine blogging, were around this price. Nowadays, they cost 120, 140. This wine at 50 destroys wines cap, 100% cap, Napa Valley cap, that retail for two times the price. And I won't name names. I've done interviews with those wines, but this is <laughs> incredible at $50. If you were to pour this blind to me, I would say it's a cold cap. Yeah, and it's made by one of the most famous cold cap makers, so for every reason it should taste that way. The finish is so long, so rich. You get, obviously, that dark chocolate, dark cocoa, and then doesn't feel saturated or, or sweet. Uh, it's balanced in spite of its power, right? 2020, the vintage. Uh, it was complicated, right? Yeah, for several reasons. Obviously, COVID was a big yeah, deal in 2020. For the whole world. We had something else happen in California, which were the wildfires. Yeah. Um, it was very unfortunate. We really only made one bottle of red wine in the entire 2020 vintage from my portfolio. A couple clients made some, but for us, it was really, um, Thomas is very selective on who he would make wines from and what made the cut. Um, this is made next to some of the most world-class wines that are in Napa Valley. So what crazy, happens is crazy. we have a, a base for this every year. And then in 2020, what didn't make the cut for some of these $250 bottles of wine, water falls into this bottle. So what's in this, we don't tell you where it's from, but it's all Napa Valley, and it's just some of the more iconic sites in Napa Valley. Where does the name come from? Because it has a very particular level, label, Catterwall Wines. Catterwall Wines. Catterwall has to do with kind of the feralness of Pope Valley, which is where the bulk of this comes from, the base of this, probably for the more appropriate term. Um, it's it's an up-and-coming spot. There's a lot of winemakers that are out in this area. Uh, it's a word that really popped into Thomas and Matt's mind, and then it's very challenging to name something. Yeah, yeah, so they yeah, wrote this thing down immediately. The label is a great design that's some polarizing to some, but it's been a great asset to yeah, us. Yeah, when, when you've had a couple of uh, glasses, you go, give me the cater, the cater one. Yeah, well, one. whatever you want to call it, it's fine. <laughs> this wine has graphite. I'm getting some wild herbs, the was, pencil shavings. Oh my God, what a lovely, lo sex. it's sexy. It's a sexy nose. You got to admit it. We'll so take that. It's a very sexy nose. And for pairings, I mean, Cabernet, people usually focus on on steaks and, you know, with, with the steakhouse sort of feel. You can drink this on its own, which is a really great benefit to that, Cabernet. The, the, that, that word that gets thrown a lot, uh, gets thrown around a lot, purity. The purity of fruit, like you feel you're biting into that black food, like blackberry yeah. or something. It's gorgeous. At $50, get this one. Busquen este vino impresionante donde lo vean. All right, let's get into four wins. I cannot anticipate what I'm going to get here because for other uh, projects, other wineries, this is their top one. Like this, the one that you have for 50, is their like sought after or, you know, most well-known premium wine. But for Thomas, it's kind of his affordable version, right? Sure, what exactly. Yeah. That's when you're that good. Okay, Four Winds. What can you tell me about Four Winds? So four Winds, Roy Chapin, his family, his mom moved out to Stag's Leap um, 40 years ago and didn't plant this 120-acre piece of land. Uh, Roy and everybody else talked her into this, and the great story about how Roy met Thomas is he went and called Heidi Barrett, he called uh, Lee Melka and everybody, and he actually found Thomas's name through a, uh, an interviewer and called Thomas, got his cell phone number, and he's like, how the hell did you get in touch with me? And that's how this, this whole thing sort of translated into um, working with this property. So it's from two different properties, both in Stag's Leap. The estate vineyard comes online in 2021. It was supposed to happen in 2020, but obviously with the fires, we decided not to make any wine. This is from two different single vineyards. From this property, you can see Shaper Hillside Select. You can see Beautiful. Kind, of the, kind of the entire Stag Sleep. one of the most famous AVAs in Napa for a reason. This wine tastes that way because it's 100% Stag Sleep. It was made up at Mending Wall, which is the first wine we tasted. Uh, but it's a it's Stag Sleep through and through. It's so identifiable. Every single time you smell it, you know Stag Sleep right away. It's unbelievably good. It's got 
a lot of things happening here on the nose, right? You got that beautiful black fruit, again, the graphite, the mint, the freshness, the characteristics of Cabernet. But there's a minerality to it. There's some, uh, um, I'm getting something that I cannot quite describe, but it, it takes me to olives. It takes me to some kind of uh, savoriness. There's a lot of savoriness to this. Absolutely. Some savoriness. And that has mostly to do with where it's from. I mean, Stag's Leap being one of the more iconic pieces of Napa Valley, you know, one of the more famous ones as well. Um, it produces very distinct, very unique fruit. And this is also 2016. Uh, Puerto Rico has a full vertical of this available. 2016? It's a 16. So it's six years uh, that the grapes were crushed and uh, put there six years ago. Yep. Yeah. And with that as well, it feels 20, like a baby. 2016 was probably one of the best vintages that Napa's had in the last 10 years. Um, if How long through, can this last? Oh, this 50 can, years? 15? 50, 50. I don't know about 50, but... 15 for sure. 15 for sure. What a beautiful wine. But but this, in terms of pairing, if somebody wants to treat him or herself with this bottle for, I don't know, Christmas is a good excuse. What do you... Like, you need something stellar here, right, with this. This is something that... This would be that special occasion, like, if you're going to go to the best steakhouse in town, if you're going to really just wow someone. I mean, the wine is very beautiful. You can drink it on its own. That purity that you said is really shining through on this. But this would pair any just beautifully with really... Just, any yeah. restaurant in town that has that has meats, grilled meats, anything along those lines. You know those singers that have this richness in their voice that they can hold the microphone here and sing? You can still smell it from here. You, sm I, you, you, <laughs> you, you, you knew I was going to say that. I have the wine here, and I can smell it from, I don't know how long, the distance here, but it's incredible. All the wines have been excellent. Thank you so much for this. Last question. Puerto Rico is a market. What do, you, what, do you, what do you feel about our little tiny island, uh, knowledgeable consumers, people who are curious? What do you think about uh, this tiny spot in the Caribbean? Well, it's my, one of my personal favorites. I come here twice a year, and I hope to continue that, that, yeah. uh, that trend on for, for years to come. It's amazing. It's amazing how many people from Puerto Rico we have visiting Napa. Yeah. So the educational level is, is much higher than certain places that we visit. Maybe I'll show up there one day. Yeah, we'd right? love to have and you. And do content. Like, I have a drone fly over the vineyards that'd be cool right? you know the wines taste better when you're in napa oh, of I, don't, course. I don't know why there's something about it, that it, it, it's, <laughs> it's happened to me in italy and spain that i drink a wine that you know affordable 20 bucks or something and i bring a couple of bottles back home and then i taste it it's different right yeah <laughs> it happens. we're in a warehouse right now and you still taste great but these wines are amazing when you're out I, in napa. and i cannot think how good they would taste over there thomas rivers brought even the water from his pool tastes uh Complex, right? Uh, no, just not. <laughs> Thank, you. Tub, maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. Mi gente, prueben estos vinos, son de película espectaculares. Los consiguen con la gran familia Fine Wine Imports. Thank you so much, man. I wish you nothing but the best. I know you're going to be in our island for a couple of days. Have a fantastic trip and we'll be in touch. I'll be sending you the link later on. Of course, yeah. I'll taste, I'll toast with this one. This, this last one is. Salud. Salud mi gente, suscríbete, dale campanita y sigue la carrera de Thomas Rivers Brown, uno de los genios de la enología a nivel mundial. Salud.